everybody says the rules favor the offensive players. Can you point to the rule? Because I can give you one, two, three, four, five, six rules that in the last few years have favored the defense. Wait, what? There's no way you're saying this. Are you forgetting about 2018 when the NBA introduced several rules to help the offense that even Curry admitted made scoring easier? You're joking, right? I just named six <laughs> rules that favor the defense. What rule favors the offense? I want to know. I guess not, J.J. Smith. What the hell was that? And this line of thinking is exactly why the NBA is in big trouble. Something you might have already noticed. J.J. Reg has been great for the NBA community, providing authentic perspectives to the unoriginal mainstream media BS. But we need to understand the context of these statements. And then I'm going to spell out all the changes the NBA has made, including some rules that have led us to the predicament we're in and the potential collapse of the NBA as we know it now. But first, the context. What is up, deuce, that's ballers, players? It's your boy MJ. JJ is asking Derek White why it's so hard to get stops in the NBA. The NBA has the highest offensive ratings in NBA history, even adjusted to the fast pace right now. Last year, the Kings had the highest offensive offensive rating ever at 118.6, a record that won't be broken so easily. And this season, there are four teams with a higher offensive rating than that. Damn scoring is becoming too easy 140 point games are a commonplace a few weeks ago we literally had the most 150 point games in a single night we just had another two 70 point games no one even cares about 60 point games anymore man what the fuck? it almost takes away the importance of each bucket we have multiple 30 point scores 10 years ago there were only 19 20 plus points per game players now there are 43 so Derek White starts saying uh, one thing just start with I mean everybody's just so talented JJ immediately cuts him off and goes off on this rant everybody is like looking for these reasons oh it's the refs oh it's the rules or we could just say these are guys then jj lists six recent rule changes that favor defense and ask anyone to point out any rule changes that help the offense how about for one freedom of movement that's just one there are several but first why was jj so angry perhaps the reason jj was so passionate about this is because he believes that the players of today are better than the players of yesterday and hot take but not really that's true in an absolute sense the players of today are more skilled and more talented in huge part because they got to see what the players of yesterday brought to the game and then work on that for years longer and there's two reasons for that think about Allen iverson's crossover his handle was completely new in the league in the late 90s and broke so many ankles Younger players could practice that sort of handle and make that part of their games. But the NBA also relaxed its palming officiating. Was there a rule change? No, but as Isaiah Thomas said, that would usually get called a carry until it all of a sudden wasn't. A recent example is Steph Curry, and now every younger player is working on a jump shot, meaning the players of today should be on average better at shooting than players of the past. But the NBA also tries to move officiating to allow for exciting offense. Key word being exciting, and that's piece number one. The NBA has constantly made rule and officiating changes to get the offensive game where it is today, all to make the game more exciting. The discussion has become about whether NBA players are just too talented now and as a result, scoring had to go up. And while a part of the high scoring might be that NBA players are more skilled, there were also several rule changes that allowed NBA offenses to have more freedom to move and create space. Kick it back to Solo. Here's Gallinari. To the corner to wide open Kevin Herter. The freedom of movement emphasis was brought in in 2018 and reinforced in 2020. The emphasis was to call fouls on any arm hooks preventing offensive and defensive players from moving, but also and most importantly, not letting defenders impede the path and movement of off ball offensive players. Curry, three for th um, that makes it really difficult to play 
defense, right? The NBA was incentivizing moving off ball, specifically because now you couldn't really get in their path. Moving the game more to the Warriors style of basketball that they had thought gave ratings. Defenses had to adjust to no longer being able to be physical with players without the ball, relying more on team defense. And the crazy thing is, this wasn't the only time the NBA did this, but the entire league changed in 2018. Before the 2018 season even started, Paul Pierce even said this in anticipation. It's no surprise to me that they're gearing everything toward the offense because, I mean, let's face it, offensive basketball is exciting to watch. When you see teams score 115, 130 points, it's exciting for a fan. And just two months into the season in 2018, people were saying you can't stop NBA offenses, can't contain them because the rule changes and that playing defense is an untenable situation. LaMarcus Aldridge said it changed the game. And he was right because the league average jumped up by five points a game from 106.3 to 111.2. That is the second biggest change in a single season in NBA history. But why did it help? It allowed smaller, less physically imposing players like Curry to go wherever they wanted. And if you touch them, it would be a foul. Essentially, it allowed players to focus more on their skills and physicality and create an NBA where that is more value. It's kind of like when you're making a player in 2K and you put all your attributes in shooting and handling and not really much on physicality. Now, someone showed me that that rule was changed since 2018. No, that's right. Heck, a year later, Curry said it gives perimeter guys a lot more freedom, a lot more opportunity for creativity and obviously challenge defense in terms of schemes and how you approach the end of the floor. A lot more ways to challenge the defense because you can create more offensive schemes. Sounds a lot like what's happening right now with the defenses struggling to keep up. Those rule changes that JJ Wright conveniently forgot about were literally called freedom of movement. Now, I could pull a JJ Stephen A. Smith and just yell, you forget about the freedom of movement changes that introduced four changes in officiating, huh? I mean, that is preposterous. But screaming does not get the point across. But here's an interesting point made by Ricky Rubio, that during the playoffs, the refs might allow more grabbing and holding, making it harder. And I think that's true. Playoff basketball is officiated differently, scoring is no longer easier, and specifically the freedom of movement emphasis, while still applicable, will lose a lot more steam. But can we check for that? Yeah. You remember how there are teams right now having the highest offensive rating in NBA history? Well, if I look at the highest offensive of ratings of teams in the playoffs with a minimum of two series played, the top 10 does have teams from 2020 onwards, but also teams from different eras, like several different Phoenix Suns teams. And if we expand to the top 25, we see a mix from different eras, meaning high scoring from the regular season hasn't fully taken over in the playoffs. Don't get any ideas, NBA. So if the only reason that scoring is an all-time high is talent, that should follow in the playoffs. But the NBA has a lot of influence, more than you would think. This process has been happening for years, or did we conveniently forget that to shape a new narrative? Monty Williams spelled it out the best, going back to 1994 when he played in the league. He said, if you went to the rack, dunk the ball, or lay it up, you got laid out. That wasn't appealing to the fans, so the league figured out a way to create more space on the floor. And this process has been going on for years. The progression that JJ Reich is also conveniently forgetting that led to this point. But I want to address the recent rule changes Reddick said before getting into what even the NBA is overlooking. Let's break down those supposed six rule changes that were made in the defense's favor. If you notice, almost all of them had something to do with calling less fouls. Specifically, new ways offenses have found to draw fouls. Mainly because all these fouls were slowing the pace of the game. Not by position but in real life watch time, taking away from what was considered exciting. No one wanted to see Harden shoot 20 free throws a game by hooking defenders' arms. What in f name are you doing? Paul George had enough. 
The NBA could have stopped the shenanigans earlier, but they waited till other players start doing it besides Harden like Trey Young in the 2021 playoffs. Bruh. Even JJ's comments, who are usually supporting him, are roasting him. The only rule change that actually changed something older was jumping into defenders to draw fouls, and that's one real win for a defense. It still hasn't taken away the main reason for the spurt of offense, and that's piece number two. The NBA has been changing the league in a certain direction for the past 20 years. I feel like the state the NBA community is in rewards clickbait, misinformation, and the community that I fell in love with is disappearing. So if you like real conversations, subscribe and fight with me. You know how players flip screens at the last second? Yeah, you couldn't do that in the 80s, that's an offensive foul. And now, screeners can lean into the player, initiate contact, and it's normal. Or how about when the screener rolls to the basket, taking his defender with him? What about traveling? Cause this was a travel in the 80s before the gather step was actually accepted. And now we got euros, spin moves, and legit travels not getting called anymore. That is blasphemous! And oh yeah, handles. You are supposed to have your hand on top of the ball, but now every player pups the ball. Dismisses. What Jordan Poole does every night would be considered a war crime in the 90s. Heck, what Shea, Curry, Trey, pretty much everyone. These were never official rule changes. It was a change in officiating and what was considered acceptable. Made to improve the offense, a reoccurring theme. But there's one that happened within the past 20 years that changed everything. In the 2004-05 season, the league was in a weird place. Michael Jordan had retired and scoring had dropped quite a bit. So much so that there were concerns that the NBA was getting a little slow. Maybe they were right. And in the 2004 NBA Finals, the Pistons were able to body and impact Kobe's path to the basket. Mark Cuban saw this and after the finals, talked with the league to see if they could steer the game in a certain direction. To make it, again, more exciting. And in the summer of 2004, hand checking was completely removed and it changed the entire style of play. If you look at the MVPs before the rule change, it was predominantly bigs like Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett. But right after rule change, we saw the rise of Steve Nash, who won back to back MVPs. Why'd that help so much? Forget the claims of physicality that you usually ignore anyway, I think it was best explained by Kenny DeJay. Smith. Cone, because there's no hand checking, when he comes and I come here and I don't like it, now I can come back, I can set you up, I can throw it between my legs, then I can go into my move. So now I don't like it. I get to an area of the floor, I, all I have to have is a pullback dribble to get to a spot to shoot the ball. In the era that we kind of grew up in, when you make your move and the hand is there and you try to reset, the hand is still on you, so you're not allowed to look. The NBA wanted to emphasize perimeter play, and with one rule change, they did. We all talk about the development of players or how the game has gone softer. Let's get it clear, the NBA as an organization is pulling the strings. In David Stern's time as head commissioner, he took into consideration what the players and owners said and made decisions that would lead to better ratings. Players and teams are adjusting to rules and coming up with whatever works. But don't just take my word for it, executives have said the same thing. And all these smaller changes have been geared to improving perimeter play, improving offense, hopefully leading to better ratings. The few rules aimed to help defense that JJ said was more to continue the flow of the game and a byproduct was helping defenses, but not in the ways other rules drastically changed the game. But you see, there's a problem, a trap that the NBA fell for, something that the EuroLeague knew and avoided. But to understand, we should look at the 2021 Team USA basketball team. Remember how we lost to Nigeria? Well, during the game, we had stars like Lillard, KD, Tatum, but almost all of them were surprised by the physical. Forget the hard and hooking, just normal drives to the hoop had stars looking for a foul, and they struggled to get open because defenders could actually use their hands. And the funny thing is, that style of basketball is what viewers wanted. And don't forget what Lucas said, it's easier to score in the NBA than in the EuroLeague, and the talent is supposedly in the NBA, right?
Now, if you handicap them defensively, less fouled, working for more buckets. And that's piece number three. The average NBA fan is getting desensitized to scoring and threes. Offensive records being broken now don't mean as much, nor capture as much attention, even though ESPN will try to stuff it down our throats, NBA saw viewership go down and thinks offense is the answer. We've always heard that people want to watch good offense, watch the ball go through the hoop, etc threes but right now it's a bit of the opposite the value of a bucket is low someone averaging 20 points no longer means they are one of the best scorers even though broadcasters are still trading 20 points like it was 15 years ago and i think a point made by kenny martin and gilbert arenas actually resonates does the modern nba have an issue with too many teams trying to play the same way yes you're doing analytics on the two three four best, best shooters, shooters in the yeah. league on one team and you're going to structure what they're doing, shooting 30, 40 threes. When you're looking at talent, you exclude certain kind of players now. You can't tell me there's not another 7 foot 2, 290 pound kid out here that's dominant. And you overlooking him because, oh, she can't shoot threes. Everybody think, well, I can go get me another step. No, you can't. you can't. Everybody different. Let's play the game like it's supposed to be. Every team is morphing into a version of the Warriors trying to have four, potentially five shooters to create a ton of space. With the rule changes, it's made it possible possible for nearly every team to do that with whatever personnel they have. And that's what people are saying now. I don't think more talent ever gets less exciting. I remember watching 2016 Steph being like, whoa, now that's something insane. But I think the way the game is officiated and what the NBA chooses to emphasize can make the game less exciting. If everyone is able to make threes, it makes it less spectacular, but that's talent. If every team is running five out, it makes it normalized. If everyone was a 6'8", 250 pound beast that can run as fast as a guard, then LeBron wouldn't even be special in the NBA. He would be average. And that's the point I'm making. If you make rule changes to guide the game to allow players to do previously one of one talents, then it's not just talent that's leading to scoring, it's literally the NBA. And when it's manufactured and not authentic, that's where you feel that bit of weirdness that you just can't put your finger on. And that's what the NBA is on right now. So JJ Rick, while I point out an important recent rule change, the culmination of all the other changes have also led us to a point where defenses are handicapped more and more. Giving them some of their rights back doesn't begin to even equal out the rule and officiating changes in the past 10 years, let alone since the beginning of the 2000s. And now, it's time to fight back and curb the offense a bit to appreciate the game more. The old of Kishwasha goes to an OG, my girl, Samhita, whose warriors are going through it right now. Thanks for the all-day support. And if you want to know about the actual worst team in NBA history, not the Pistons, there's a video right here. And if you're still here, you will real want to comment no, so I know. It's your boy MJ, we out, and we bye.